Welcome or welcome back everyone. I am Rei and today we are going to finish Remembrance Vessels. It's we we've spent a lot of time here. <laughs> but it seems like we can finally move on. But not before we've seen the hero's memory and pristine memory. And um we're gonna start with the hero's memory just because we only have one left. And also because Ellie is a big question mark. <laughs> so, get comfy and let's go! Kevin! It's It's been a freaking while. In the time of now, you were already a leader of the people in the time of the time. Yeah. You are the one who is called the king of the king. I thought it was a special person to be a leader of the king. That's actually a good point. For us, we knew kind of who he was, so it made sense, but from their perspective? でも、昔も今と同じような状況だったみたいね。僕は自分ができることをする。ただそれ。じゃあ、あなたはどう感じているの? <laughs> And we've only seen him like way down from all of the <laughs> recognition, but also the responsibility once when Sakura died and Hua talked to Kevin. I will never forget that scene because I thought it was very, very, very important for Kevin's character. So, ah. Oh. But of course. Everything that matters is the mission. That's right. So, do you want to be a leader of the world? For example, do you want to be a leader of the world and be a leader of the world? It's so sad that this Kevin is just a completely different version. Not a completely different, but just like a different update version of Kevin that we know. So, I don't think the answer here matters much. Because he has made up his mind already. Mm -hmm. Nobody could. That's not true. Sue kind of saw the possibility that it could happen. And Dr. May told Sue that Sue should stop him. Gosh, Dr. May's missions. I don't like them. Leader <laughs> to Ooh. Ooh. Is this kind of foreshadowing what will happen? Because so far in the whole game, it seemed like kind of Otto was a leader in a leader in a big leader position. Then Kevin showed up, was kind of threatening that, but also kind of just sat back. So Otto was obviously gone. So Kevin probably doesn't want the position either. So are they trying to tell us that it will be Kiana? Because even if Kiana is amazing and had a lot of growth, I cannot see her in a leader position. <laughs> Either they clash or they will bond and figure something out together. The last thing would be with a, without a lot of conflict, so I doubt that that will happen. <laughs> also, they could just mean that Otto and Kevin met and they were kind of big leaders and stuff like that. Ooh. Ooh. I didn't know he was that good with words. Oh. But it's, it kind of hurts. Because he's not really doing that anymore, right? Or is he? We really don't know what Kevin thinks like in detail. In the current era. What is that? That's that just looks like some ice crystal stuff. Okay, let's read about his wish, why not? <laughs> so cold. 
The pink-haired girl pushed the white-haired man's shoulder to walk along the corridor. Elysia, I don't think it's necessary. Ah, don't say no. Don't say anything. Just keep going. The man seemed confused, but the willful girl didn't give him a choice. We have more important things to do, Elysia. Huh? Isn't my party important? <laughs> New threats may come up at any time, and we have no idea of how the next Hasha would surprise us. Alright, alright, the seventh eruption is just over. Can't you cut yourself some slack? Why do you have to push yourself so hard? Ah, <sighs> Kevin, you're growing more and more like May, and I bet you'd be glad to hear that. I'm not, <laughs> but... Come on, there is no but. Alright, here we are. She pushed Kevin to her door, which was not locked, and nor was it lit inside. He had to do what the girl told him. Finally, he made up his mind and pushed the door open. Happy birthday, Kevin! Oh, no, that is kind of wholesome. He was taken aback by the sudden light and voices, and nearly ran into someone hiding behind the door. Kevin, watch out! The girl behind the door cried out, and the cake in her hands almost fell to the floor. May? Oh, that's so sweet, oh my god. The girl wearing glasses tilted her head and smiled gently. Oh, this is one of the, the rare moments that we see her being sweet. We just really had no, not many opportunities to see that. Elisha draped a woolen rock over his sh her shoulders, and the other people in the room came near to wel welcome the birthday boy. Oh, that is so sweet. Kevin blinked and blinked. He knew everyone in the room, but they all seemed different today. The first one that caught his attention was the girl with fox ears who wore, wore a gown, a huge contrast with her assassin look. I want to see that. Show it to us. He noticed Kevin's attention and returned an innocent, carefree smile. Aww. The little girl by her side was using the power of psycho psychokinesis as usual to send the cake and eight gifts to the table. An odd green box stood out in the mix as a representation of the blessings from someone who couldn't show up. Aww. Then follow th the followed funny music. The boy who received four harsh lectures from Kevin and burst into tears on his first day in the group. He was playing the harmonica clumsily and trying to find the tune. Oh. <laughs> but very soon, something else drowned the harmonica sound entirely. A sublime hymn began to echo in Kevin's head. He didn't expect her to show up, and in such a way. And the man who never had a moment's hes hesitation on the battlefield. He was staring at the cake with a frown and seemed to have a problem with how the candles were arranged. <laughs> this day, the future leader of the moth and the first seven mantis soldiers were gathered here for an insignificant reason. I'm turning off the light. With Elijah's joyful voice, the light went out. In the dark, the candle flames were blinking and dancing. Time to blow the candles, Kevin. Don't forget to make a wish. No matter what it is, it will come true. I'll make it so. Elysia, that was supposed to come from me. Huh? Is it so on the script I wrote, Sakura? <laughs> Elysia, I bet you didn't even remember your own script. I... I wrote it myself. No way I would make a mistake. It must be you have the pre-revision version instead of the final version. Gosh. I wanna cry. I really wanna cry. Maybe I should have read this last, but also, oh my god. Kevin shook his head and laughed. Oh my god, a rare Kevin laugh? The twinkling candles lit up his cold body and took him back to the distant past, when he laughed like this for the last time. <laughs> oh my god. Like, every time I think... Okay, I, I now know how much they want to hurt us. No. It's more. Way more. And then, in the pleasant vibe, he bent down and blew all the candles off. I want to know what his wish in that moment was. Light went out, and so did the noises. There seemed to be delicate coordination. Darkness engulfed the world, and the light was never turned on again. Gradually, his eyes became accustomed to the dark. He saw the transparent glass panel of the hibernation pod, and heard the humming of machines. There was nothing else left. Oh gosh, talking about a 180. The pod went down and into the embrace of darkness and silence. Only a lonely dot of light took his last dream, everyone in the dream far, far away. 
Mania, Sakura, Dystopia, Mobius, Cosma, Ponia, Atto, and Elysium. The light went out, along with all the names and the wish he made. Oh my god. Yeah, there's literally no way I will ever hate Kevin. Like, no. There's in no world and no universe ever. Uh-uh. No. I I don't think anything he will do in the future is able to override the knowledge we have about the past for me. Because that that, that that's just that's just a whole other level. Gosh, Kevin. Oh, and with the freaking 180 with the darkness and the names and the vision. Oh. Sure. Isn't that a great start? We are, um, I think it's a perfect start. <laughs> and we didn't even get a hi. No. <laughs> Elisa was pinching something with three fingers. She raised her head a little and studied the object to the light. What are you doing? What did she find? Also, I need more answers about her. May paused a moment and then leaned closer. But before she could catch a glimpse of anything, she heard the girl chuckle. Elijah quickly opened her hand and brushed past the corner of May's eye. <laughs> she is smooth. Oh my god. No one is safe. If Ellie is in the room, no one is safe. Everyone will fall for her. <laughs> her hand had been empty since the beginning. Of course it has been. <laughs> Couldn't? Or didn't want to? Or some power? Asha powers can give you eyeshadow? I need to become a Hasha because I can't do makeup at all. And I'm I'm never patient enough to learn, so <laughs> That's actually a good question for her specifically because we know she can't change. But does that include or exclude makeup and stuff? <laughs> Oh? Is that a challenge? Because I will accept. Makeup is a challenge. When? What, what was the special occasion? Aww. She's always pretty though. Like. Oh. I mean, that was just sweet, and I'm glad that this was just sweet. She gives us a breather. I know it will turn dark in a second, but... <laughs> but right now... Thank you, players on the stage. Yeah, so, so, so she seems to write stage plays, scripts, or whatever. It's just now my guess. Delizia, I just checked your body fat level, and it's higher than the last time, so... Alright, alright. Why do you have to check this? May didn't leave you here for this. What matters is how you feel rather than the number. You get it? Fine, it might be hard for you. But one day I'll you Oh. Wait, is this also the same person or are those three people? Fine, it might be hard for you, but one day you'll understand, Prometheus. It's the AI, right? May didn't leave you here for this. Okay. Understand what? Understand why people laugh and why they cry. If you wish to look into the root cause of human emotions, I can help with that. Wait, is Prometheus the AI that is in Void Archive? Yes, right? That's the only AI that we know of, I think. <laughs> That's fascinating then. Now I will read way more into this. Don't bother, I just came to talk to you. 
Everyone is at May's meeting and I'm left all alone here. You're experiencing emotional spikes, Elysia. Hey, didn't May tell you not to read someone else's biometrics without permission? I'm blushing now. But emotional spikes. Maybe a little bit. Suspected by good friends and being distanced. Anyone would be upset, right? Actually, I just want someone to talk to. I wonder when this is. Is this when they when they suspect her to be the next Hersha? Because, oh my god, I need to know more about that. Uh, I never thought I'd be hopelessly watching the chasm grow one day. What? Prometheus, you know it better than me, right? We can't afford another civil war right now. No matter the reason, no matter how it goes, there can only be one outcome. Humanity is self-destruction. Ah, right. But people of our age have been fighting Honkai for too long. They deserve a better ending, right? But she is saying they. <laughs> Not we. Prometheus, in your eyes, and from a probability standpoint, how can humanity be united again? The emergence of a more terrible enemy than Hershas, or a more severe threat. Actually, that would have been my my answer too. But, I mean, the Hershas always got more dangerous and... I mean, in a way it helped, but also humanity were less and less people, so that probably helped too. But not in that way. Ah, great minds think alike. We're thinking the same thing, Prometheus. Wait, but she didn't choose to become a Hersha to unite humanity, right? I would completely think that she would do that. But I don't know how she would be able to do that. I, don't, I, I hope that's not it. <laughs> An enemy that can force the survivors to set aside their differences and unite together. This is indeed the most effective way. But also the hardest. No one can tell for sure if it brings unity or speedier extinction of humanity. Yeah, that too. Ah, uh, I'd hate to see the world plunge into hell again. But it really comes to that. She took out a pink crystal flower and twisted it between her fingers. Not bad for the leading actress to play a charming villain for a cha change. Oh no, that is her plan! What? But how did she... Or did she know that she's a Hersha but had it under control and didn't tell anyone and when they suspected she was thinking how could they, how could she unite everyone? But that wouldn't make, how? That wouldn't make any sense. So did she somehow contact the will of Honkai to become a Hersha or is she, maybe she's playing a villain in a different way. Someone called her traitor after all and I... I know you guys have been telling me in the comments, like, details and stuff about that, but I, I'm just bad at puzzling everything together here. <laughs> but okay, we're getting closer to juicy, juicy Ellie lore, so... Or... May, still no hi. Oh no. Huh? ナターシャがいなかったらあなたがお嬢様だったなんて知らなかったでしょうね。あなたも高価で可愛らしいドレスを着て優雅にアフタヌーンティーを楽しんでりするの。うーん、想像してみるだけでも面白いわね。メイ
それなら本当か嘘かわからなくてもあなたに聞いた方がいいはずよ I mean yeah maybe we can deduct more from Ellie's half answer maybe 後半の言葉は聞かなかったことにしておくわね<笑> good、うんでも本当に話すようなことはないのよ。マッとされているのはそこらの崩壊獣では定義できないからなの。What? ビシュヌのように一番弱い貝の崩壊獣から成長を続けて審判型を超えた存在に。普通のランクをつけるなんてふさわしくないでしょ ?But if it's like ビシュヌ、shouldn't it be in the same category? What makes it different? これもメイが決めたのよ。しかも、理論上の末法型崩壊獣は、最後になっても3体しか現れなかった。I wonder when and why they appear though, and if those types that will only get stronger also appear in the current era or not. とにかく、それのことは超レアで、超すごい崩壊獣因子だと思っておけば大丈夫よ。Right. After Cosma and Mobius happened. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yes, so they were in the same category. I see. But they should still be different, right? I don't remember a thing from Mobius Vessels. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's been so long, there was so much information. Th that's it? Oh. We haven't gotten a hi yet. See, she didn't even flirt with us, in, with us in this one. Oh no, we are really heading to dark times. Invader. Success. The girl took one last look at the screen, and the th thumb sized miniature self propelled robot began remotely transmitting video back to her terminal. Inside, a door slowly began to open. Wait, is this the moment? I know that one time she she went into Mobius' lab and did stuff. I don't quite remember what it was, but I know that Klein mentioned that Ellie said that Mobius wanted something really weirdly specific and so Ellie could go, go in there. I think. <laughs> but maybe this is something else. I She made the room's light, the lights brighter. Turned her eyes to her hands and quickly looked away. Nail biting was a bad habit, and she was determined to break it. The door on the screen was now completely opened. She turned her head, feeling a bit confused. This place that even she had spent a lot of time breaking into was an area that everyone had kept secret. Only that green haired lady's here? It is Mobius's lab. <laughs> so, what exactly is Honkai? The organization she had been spying on did everything they could to cover up this series of disasters. What was it all about? Wait, is this Ellie's first time there? Did Ellie also join the moth and everything after she broke in? Did I know that before? I don't think so. The girl had the tiny robot fly off the wall and slowly approached the only human in the area an attempt to capture the other party's chatter more clearly. Finally got it. You guys are... first. Oh... It's unclear. The girl remembered the noise the micro-robot makes when it flies, and carefully kept it close to its target. Oh, you're really something. You've already gotten this deep in your investigation. Oh no, this is someone else, right? Have I been discovered? She jerked her hand back, causing the robot to lose control and fall from the green-haired woman's collar. No, this voice is clearly... At the same moment the girl reacted, she felt someone's tender body lean against her back. Clearly came from right next to me. The girl lowered her head and let the other person put her jaw on her shoulder. Before things became irre... irre... irre oh my... no, not words. I'm trying to think so hard I can't even pronounce words. Irreparable. No, no, I'm I'm leaving this word alone. <laughs> not not today, word. There was still a chance to come up with a plan. Wow, this is the first time I even I have seen this. You must really have some guts. So you're the one who has been investigating the moths, then. Vilvi, right? What a cute name. Very fitting. Okay, Vilvi broke in, trying to get more information from 
from about Möbius about Honkai. And Ellie found her. <laughs> the girl felt her ears begin to, begin to itch from the heat emanating as the other person spoke. Yes, I saw the message you sent them yesterday. It took me all day to find you. From what was just said, it seems I've done it. Oh, and your earrings are very pretty. Can you tell me where you got them? Hey, don't sweat it. You've got plenty of time to figure out what to do with me. Until then, let's just chit chat. <laughs> it is so Ellie. That one was just kind of sweet. Because we saw Vilvi basically in young. I love it. Also, they are writing those scenes so perfectly anime-like that I can picture the scene in anime style. <laughs> Really? Even now? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but we also spend a lot of time here. <laughs> but how much in-game time? Past. I mean, how long did May spend here? Her gaze slowly drifted up to those crimson horns again. Oh. <laughs> 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 He's hyping it up so much, now I want to too. May, come on, please. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I would agree to the deal. May, you should agree. Oh, May wants to agree though, right? <laughs> Ellie is also the only one who can play with May or can play May. <laughs> and so the ear touching happened. <laughs> and time went by. This is. It's, again, way too good. It's way too good, but again, she's so good at, at kind of changing the directive of the conversation. She's good at that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, Maeve. <laughs> Learning won't get you out of answering the question. <laughs> We've been played again. <laughs> like I said, she's the only one who can toy with me. So What? I mean, I don't know at what time this conversation plays. So maybe this is right before Eponia. Or this is right before we meet her for the last time, or her Hasha version, or that tells us she's a Hasha, so I don't know. Maybe it is. No, I think she either means a Ponya or herself. Mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So it's about her, it's, it's about the door, what is behind the door. The thing is, it's not an answer for me. It's more questions. Like, Ellie and everyone here is like, oh, it's the truth, it's the answer you're looking for. No. It's more questions. It's more questions than ever. <laughs> oh. Okay. Don't mind if I do. What? 
Um, <laughs> oh god, what, what's that? Mahesvara? Is that, that's not how you say it, probably. I don't think I've heard that word yet. Mobius, I didn't expect you to invite me to visit your laboratory. I'm so pleasantly surprised. Visit. I'd rather have you on the operating table instead of standing there. Tell me how you really feel. Alicia's gaze rose slightly, taking in the laboratory, and then finally fell back on the girl whose height didn't even come up to her shoulders. More Mobius! This brings back memories. I recall something similar happened a long time ago. Only this time, no matter how much you tiptoe, you won't get by me. How boring. Let's get down to business. I want to show you something. Mobius tapped a few keys and that electronic screen covering the laboratory center slowly began to re retract, revealing the operating table beneath. On top lay a corpse. This escalated quickly. <laughs> I should I should expect things like that when it comes to Mobius. Yeah, Mobius, your interests are really something... It kind of scares me. <laughs> ah, poor fellow whose operation had failed. His fusion factor is the Mahasvara, just like you. Oh. The girl looked slightly apologetic. That's quite a pity. I thought you guys would have given up, given up on the Mahasvara factor a long time ago. After all, there's only one case of someone achieving success. So far, and it's her. <laughs> yes, the Vipralopa class is not so easy to control. Look at him. His body looks like that now. Even if he's lucky enough to be brought back, would he even still be human? So, Elysia, I have a new question. Mubia stared at the girl in front of her, and the emerald green snake eyes revealed a dense, cold like. For you, it seems there aren't any side effects. I understand the suspicion. If everyone fails with that, or if, if no one lives after that, and even the corpses look weird and more monster than human-like. Ellie is still keeping so much, but I wonder what, like... <sighs> I have so many theories, but the thing is... I'm kind of afraid that there will be answers anyway at the end of this or in the in the coming chapters. Okay, never mind though. I'm I'm just I'm just telling you. <laughs> so, one thought was maybe she was always Hasha, a Hasha or not always, but like from pretty early on, but she was kind of like you could always control it or but I don't know how we could justify that in any way. So, that is kind of a big stretch. But also would explain why there weren't any side effects. Or we had some different kind of powers, which I don't know what could what that could be. And that had something to do with the operation. I mean, why she didn't have any side effects, but we know that there were side effects though, right? Or were the side effects from something else? I mean the side effects that she is not changing and hell has elf ears. Or are those side effects a different kind of side effect? I mm, I love the Mobius capsules though. Like everyone that involves Mobius will give information. <laughs> me, me, got you, me we are we are not getting one one sweet greeting from her today. What? Huh? Okay. What's going on now? Yes. Strangely, strangely, the pink-haired girl did not come closer. Instead, she kept glancing at May as she worked on a piece of paper. She can draw too. Yes, can she? Oh. Wait, that's so cool. Wait, so... Let's say she does that for all of her books, right? And we know she wrote the dummy guide for Kalpas and I think also some others. Did she put paper figures of every character in there? Because that would be freaking hilarious. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh. I mean, that's true, but saying it like that. Oh, I would love if all of them, like all of the memories and the conscious consciousnesses, sus, sus, would get Solium bodies and could leave here. I mean, I don't know if I would want that because it could also be extremely, extremely dangerous, but it would be freaking cool. It was the first time May saw Alicia smile so gently, sweetly, yet lonesomely. But the look was transient. In a blink, her enthusiasm returned. Oh. That is cool. That's that's literally this place, right? I mean, it's freaking cool. She is talented, huh? <laughs> I like it. But also, it's interesting because every flame chaser for the last item gave us something personal. So I wonder what that is for her. Like, what does this place symbolize for her? Is it the hope of the previous era? Is it the wishes of the previous era? Honestly, it kind of makes sense. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, did everyone help? Just imagine Kalpas being so annoyed that Ellie even asks him for help, but still does his thing and just like grumbling returns it to her and is like, it's not like I tried or anything. Don't think I want to help. <laughs> I can see that. It would be... I, that's just my head headcanon. If they won't tell us who worked on it, then that's what I take. <laughs> oh. Wait, I want to look through it. Wanting to... Give that to her? Do that? Make it? What? what? That's really sweet though. <laughs> oh, that's the thing. She's always playing, like, she's always playing that part. I don't even think she's playing the part, but like, every time it gets kind of serious or anything, she is just more cheerful. She is so fascinating. Like, in a way, she seems simple, but there is so much more behind it. But at the same time, it still seems simple, but also not. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I think May was just about to run away. <laughs> Or already one meter away and Elisa was just like, wait, don't. Oh my god, that's so sweet. Oh, now I'm afraid to read that. Because the sweeter the conversation before, the darker the freaking thing will be. That's what I learned from the last few we did. Sure, prophecy. Sure. <laughs> I'm not ready. Ooh, having said that, Kalpas seems to be in quite a bit of trouble this time. In the lobby, the two flame chasers walked side by side. He must have come to you too, Aponia. Did something happen? Ellie and Aponia talking? <gasps> About Kalpas? Mm. Oh no, it seems quite a lot has happened. If you don't want to talk about it, we can change the subject. I've been having a bad premonition, like a strange feeling in the air. It's beginning to creep upon us. Elysia. The trust you want to believe in, it doesn't exist. Even if you gather us all up and do what you can to keep this group together, it will fall apart one day, just as it is now. There is no possibility of us starting from scratch. Well, that's pretty harsh. Is this also something you see? <laughs> oh gosh, those voices are polar opposites. I really want to play that, but also... I think she was kind of right, but also kind of wrong. I mean, the thing is, they kind of lost to Honkai. They kind of also didn't lose to Honkai. They kind of got together and worked together, but also humanity was lost anyway. There's just a lot to unpack. Um, well, I saw a desert. <laughs> Not a desert. A desert. Yes. 
the end is approaching, all human efforts will be in vain, and even the paradise left behind by you and me will collapse in the distant future and cease to exist. Is the paradise... What's the paradise? Is the paradise basically the Elysian realm? Maybe? Or something else? But that's fascinating. So, yeah, I mean, of course she knew it. That we, we know that, but I didn't know she talked to, let's say, Ellie about it. The girl was silent for a rare moment. Once in this hall, she proudly announced that the 13 flame chasers had formed. Oh, I can't see that. But the Hasha who followed prematurely added the initial crack to this round table and brought about its disintegration. After a long time, she opened her mouth. There was no surprise or fear in her face, only her usual sly smile. Prophecy. Such an interesting thing. I should give it a try. What? I agree, Aponia. What? What are you talking about? Have you gone insane? Please. Stop going mental. Thank you. But I don't have the special abilities you have. I can only see some things that are close at hand, such as... How dare they? How dare they give us this last Ellie recollection and blur something? How freaking... <laughs> I mean, maybe it just says either final Hasha, next Hasha, the Hasha that came after their this talk or whatever. I don't know. Or her ending, or her turning, or... But it's fascinating that she can see some things. Ellie's abilities are the biggest question mark. <laughs> Ten days later, the eleventh day of the meeting that Mobius had initiated was at hand. That, that sounds... tiring. The lobby was still empty and deserted. Again, it's not about a desert, or about a dessert, but it was deserted. This is not even funny. <laughs> the difference is that this time, only Aponia was left in the room. She recalled the conversation that took place there, and strangely, the word was still blurred. She didn't know what Ellie said. At that time, her tone was lively and light. If she were merely discussing breakfast for tomorrow, that's what's so unnerving sometimes about Ellie. She has always been so lively and brisk, even as she looked back at her homeland for the last time. Ooh. Elysia. Aponia walked out of the lobby and looked up at the sky. There used to be countless glowing filaments. It was the strings of fate that only she could see. And now, those strings were disappearing into nothingness. Little by little. It was as though a pair of hands were lining up the stars, erasing the originally delineated future one by one. Are they saying that Ellie can change fate? Are they saying that Ellie could rewrite the fate that Aponia foresaw? I mean, Ellie just said, Ah, prophecy, I should give it a try. She meant that literal, didn't she? I have more questions than this is the freaking last one. I can't but I can't <laughs> I know the new the, the next chapters will dive more into stuff, but I don't know what to expect there. I don't know what will happen. I just know that I need more. I need so much more about everyone especially ellie's abilities that's the biggest question mark here i think everything else at least there are some hints tips or puzzle pieces honestly probably also for her power there are also probably puzzle pieces but only those that i can only look at after i already know what it is maybe mm, i'm so curious so you thought we were already done, did you? But no, I did want to take a look at the freaking items and I can see if that might not be interesting, like maybe all the time or for everyone, but like I want to at least take a look at them. <laughs> but also it seems like I don't even have all of them because some are unlocked by some achievements, so sad, but okay. 
we'll just deal with what we have and we'll just start with the moth insignia. A badge made of some sort of alloy. Not the character. The central ring seems to have been made using some special material, such that even if a single twilight ray is reflected on it, it will seem like the badge is emitting a stream of flames. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my god. They should totally sell those as items. <laughs> Maybe they already do. There seems to be words carved on the back of this item, but they are now illegible. There are fine scratches all around it, which seems rather unusual. Once upon a time, each new member of the Moths was given one such unique badge, taking their oath of duty under light akin to the driving rain. After a certain point, however, this practice was discontinued abruptly. As such, even some Mantis did not have a badge of their own, even until the end. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. I love that. World building, again. <laughs> I mean, those of you who watch my streams know that I love world building already, but... Yeah. Tin flask. No, no, it's that one. <laughs> a metal wine canteen that has warped somewhat from long-term use. While ancient, this canteen has been kept very clean. It also seems that someone often scrubbed its surface. I mean, honestly, Sue probably took pretty good care of it. The liquids within have long dried up. Even breathing deeply of its contents elicits no alcoholic scent. On the other hand, the faint smell of disinfectant constantly wafts off the outer surface of the canteen, no matter how hard one scrubs it. Not that the two owners of this canteen ever realized this, of course. For them, the pungence of disinfectant was part of everyday life, because they were both doctors, right? Oh gosh. Oh gosh. <laughs> I love the detail they put to everything. That's just... It just hurts all over again. I love it. <laughs> Burden, wait, from from who was that? Could be Kalpas, maybe. A small tongue of crimson flame. No, it could be Kevin, actually. A small tongue of crimson flame sealed within solid ice. This flame still smolders beneath the transparent layer of ice. Ooh, but this is Shamar's undying fire that burns without end. Ooh, writing, so poetic. <laughs> this is a remnant of Kevin's first use of Shamar's assault. The Honkai beast running amok across the city were incinerated utterly, but the city itself also became a pyre. When the sun rose again over the hor horizon, as flames that had yet to burn, the city ruins outflickered in the wind. He stood amidst the debris, repeating one line over and over. It was a memorial for the fallen, but more than that, it was a credo he repeated to himself. Humanity shall defeat the Honkai. Oh... Oh, that hurts so bad. I don't know, something about Kevin's story. That wasn't your fault, Kevin. Those people were lost to us from the beginning. But at least you prevented an even greater disaster. Even so, this is a burden I must shoulder. I must carry all these sins. I love that there are even little comments. There were no comments here, no, okay. Don't want to miss anything. <laughs> Gold goblet, a wine goblet made of gold, it ever runs over with fine wine. She was not drawn to the noble, dazzling light, nor was she drunk on the dreams that the delicacy brought. It was just that this goblet of wine caused her to remember the past, a golden, prosperous age, a time as sweet as ambrosia. Eden, you're drunk. <laughs> Maybe, but I like it this way. The first thing I thought of, she's drunk on like the dreams and hopes and the previous era you know she said she belongs to it oh <laughs> no i'm hurting all over again also i'm noticing there's also pink in this could everyone who is closely related to ellie have some pink i don't know if that even plays a role or if it's more about honkai or just a design choice for eden but i like that oh my god mad king's mask I mean, I I have hope maybe that there will be a little bit more lore. <laughs> At least I can start to think about it again. A mask that combines lightness with durability. Although its practicality as armor is nonetheless suspect. Halpas was unique among the moth in his ability to stand firm amidst endless extermination. Similarly, none knew why he wore the mask. I don't think I know, too. Quite a few people worked up the courage to ask him why to his face, but not one of them ever received a reply. 
Of course, this man, who slowly came to possess the heart of a beast, would not open his mouth to reply. Yet when he hears those questions, his mind would react instinctively. If people had the power to read thoughts, they would have seen that endless darkness and the kalpas that yet existed as a concept. What? What? <laughs> what? Okay, this confused me more than before. Like, if, if the Elysian Realm was supposed to tell me what Kalpas is, I'm... I'm oblivious. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I get it. This is the only thing that can remind you that you don't have to wreck everything in your path. Shut it. <laughs> is that really it? Is it that... Is it something as a reminder for him? I mean, it could make sense. Because he wasn't always, like... Only destruction, right? I think so. Light as a Bodhi leaf. An ordinary leaf that falls from the tree of Sumeru. In truth, this was but one of the withered worlds viewed through the second divine key, Cosmic Juggernaut. Ooh, the leaf's veins tell the tale of that world's struggles and its final sigh of futility. I wonder though, because Sue even has this in his, like, here is splash art in the Elysian Realm. I wonder if this world particularly is important to him or special to him. Maybe it's the one with the female Sue, who knows? <laughs> I don't get why you waste the effort gathering those leaves. Won't they just wither by themselves anyway, even if you just leave them be? It may be so, but to me, the act of watching over them and witnessing their ends itself has meaning. I can get that. Like, I think... I think I would also kind of like the jobs Sue has. Like, from every missions from the Flame Chasers, I would prefer Sue's. <laughs> Forget me not. Oh, this is Sakura, right? Several light blue flowers. If you draw near, you can smell their faint fragrance. When Sakura still walked the earth as an assassin, people often failed to notice her presence altogether. As for tales concerning her, they never seemed as much like the deeds of a person than some inevitable natural phenomenon. For example, if a person became her target, the last thing they saw on this earth would be the scene of just such a flower slowly falling to the earth before their eyes. The flower would already appear dead and gloomy when they first saw it, and when the bloom hit the ground, so too would blood spray upon it without a moment's delay. It is so dark, but it's such a cool imagery. Oh my god. This isn't your best habit, Sakura. Hmm. Well, they ought to know what they died for. Ooh. <laughs> Those lines are just something else. I really enjoy them. And I love the commentary from them. <laughs> this is... This is more lore than I expected already. I'm happy. <laughs> Forbidden Seed. That's a name. Evolution is innate to all beings. For personal survival and to ensure the continuation of the race, living creatures must continue to evolve to steal another breath in their struggle against the world. But the organism within this vessel is not something you could place anywhere in evolutionary history. Indeed, it might not even be called a living creature, for nothing living could be this hideous. It does not belong to this world. Even if it could keep a certain race's flame of hope alive a little while longer. Ooh. I want to know what this organism is, though, or do we know, actually? Like, was it something that she experimented with, uh... uh it was not Hersha of Corruption. With one of the Hershas? Or is it something completely different? Wait, what if this is how she helped Mei with making the child? Wait, could that be? No. But also, it somehow would make sense, but I don't know if that's what they meant. Maybe not. You shouldn't have crossed that line, Mobius. <laughs> Haven't you noticed, Sue? We all crossed over to the other side long ago. Maybe it's more about Su uh, about Möbius personally. But also, I, I need you to here. Like, I'm... <laughs> there are too many thoughts in my head right now. 
Oh, I hate that we can't even really see her. It's so mean. We always hate Himeko. I swear, if 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 something happens to any Himeko proxy in any of the Hoyoverse games, again, then they literally hate her. <laughs> or the players, or both. Maybe they hate themselves, who knows. <laughs> Ua is standing in this photograph, next to a red-haired woman. Honestly, I love this hairstyle for Himiko the most, though. The background is draped in fog and rain, making it hard to see their expressions. Most of the photo has become blurred, and faded other than Hua, as though it was left in a far too moist space for too long. Given the technology available then, fixing this photo wouldn't have been hard, yet Hua never did. Or perhaps it might be better to say that she could never find a way to convince herself that this had any meaning. Oh, this hurts. She no longer remembered what happened the day this photo was taken, what the redhead had said, or how she had replied. Yet even so, she kept it by her side and it became a source of strength for her on many occasions. Oh, it's even more ironic because Hua is alive and not in previous and current era. Oh gosh. Hua, don't you ever smile, even in photos? I mean, just look at Himeko. She's smiling so happily. Um, did you just say someone's name? Is she traumatized and couldn't she she couldn't remember her name and everything for a while, or maybe the whole time? Oh my god, this this is so sad. This is so incredibly sad. Or what if? <laughs> no, she was also called Major Himiko here, right? In the previous era. I don't I don't remember for sure. But I think she was also called Himeko. But what if she was not called Himeko? And Ellie said Himeko nonetheless. And Hua didn't know that. That would be that would be an interesting twist. I don't think it's that deep though. <laughs> I'm a master of overthinking after all. Crystal Rose. Maybe we can learn more about that because that seems definitely I mean it is Ellie's ability, but what does it do? A crystal flower that blooms like a rose, lovely and timeless. She loved humanity, but she did not love them for the one, but instead for the whole. Wait, but that's actually interesting, because Möbius is, in that regard, the same. Right? Even though they define humanity differently, Möbius also sees humanity more as a concept, or like one whole, instead of individuals. And in that regard, she is similar. Obviously, it's still completely different, but I'm just pointing out similarities. <laughs> Indeed, this maiden always loved humanity, whether beautiful or ugly, good or evil, right or wrong. Her love had never changed, and it never would. It r r would remain as lovely as this rose and as timeless as this crystal. Ooh, in that sense, the ability makes even more sense. Elysia, how did you manage to use Honkai in this way? <laughs> It's a secret. Still, if you really want to know, Doctor, it's not as if I can't tell you. Did she, though? Did she? Mm. She's keeping secrets from us. I want to know. <laughs> Abandoned. An exquisite cufflink from some uniform. Its edges show traces of having been burned. This must be Kevin then again. Because I don't remember... Like, I don't remember what we got from who, but I'm, I think I can deduct... Is the duck the right word? It doesn't sound right to me. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is. <laughs> so this must be Kevin. It's also his colors. The color scheme and pattern of this cufflink are very similar to the emblem of a certain famous educational institution. Though its edges have been burned black, it still largely remains in good condition, and it remains evident that this is one of Kevin's mementos from his school days. It's from his school days! Because it was really precious to him that time, right? I mean, the time with Sue, and when he had, when he was kind of crushing on Dr. May, and was so such a just innocent teenage boy. Gosh, today my soft spot for Kevin is really showing. <laughs> I didn't even know my soft spot for him was that big, okay? Many of Kevin's personal effects were either lost to the fires of war, or turned to ash by his use of Shamash though he did not particularly mourn their loss. But when he did discover this cufflink in a corner of his closed cupboard, 
He did not immediately throw it in the trash. Instead, he looked at it for a good long while, before returning it to the place where he'd found it. Perhaps even he did not realize it, but those days in school, now gone, never to return, had a far larger place in his heart than he imagined. I agree. <laughs> I agree so hard. I didn't think that you'd keep this. When we first entered school, you mentioned that you liked this particular design. You said it went well with the uniform. I don't remember I ever said that. <laughs> oh, so and Kevin, so sweet. I can't. Like, I don't care if 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 you want to ship them or if you just wanted to to say they're best friends. I just love them. I don't care what they are. I don't care <laughs> what they will be. I just love them. They're good old days. That's Eden for sure. That passage was taken. Wait, we're not at the start. I knew it. A record made using non-professional equipment that contains an a cappella segment by Eden. That passage was taken from a folk song in her hometown, with the lyrics largely meaning May time remain here forever. Do we want to cry again? Honestly, we should just never stop crying when we play or watch something from Honkai. <laughs> the distant curtain call and the audience's enthusiastic cheers can still be heard in the background. There was once when the audi audience could not bear to disperse, even after the concert was over and the curtain had fallen, shouting her name passionately. Listening to the hue and cry outside, Eden recorded this song with a simple device from behind the curtain. Oh, Gosh, she's so precious. Eden, that performance ended long ago. That era ended long ago. No, I'm still here. Those memories, the remnants of that light, they are all still here. I kind of wish that that Möbius would have just dragged her back to the cryopods and she she just, I don't know, had therapy with Sue after they woke up or something. I... Like, something about her, it just feels like if she would have been able to go past that, past losing that era, she would have been... She would have been able to change so much in their group after the cryo sleep, I think. But also, that's wishful thinking. <laughs> that won't get us anywhere. Shattered shackles. Kelp us again! Wait. Okay. Broken chains that seem to have been torn apart by brute force. Those restraints were put on that man by his comrades. Even though the chains had long since broken, the restraints remained. Bearing them, he had stepped onto countless battlefields. Yet it was not nearly enough. He craved for endless war, thirsted for a chance to vent his endless rage. The man knew that this inner fire would one day consume him. But even so, he would break all the chains that bound him. He would step onto the battlefield, on the final battlefield. He would burn the end of all things. I want to know what happened. Like, I want to know. How exactly the freaking final fight went. Because... Kalpas will say, honestly, it's, it's so baffling that they lost or had to retreat or whatever. Because Kevin was there. Kalpas was there. The, the, the others were there. <laughs> I just don't get it. I mean, oh, Ellie was not there. I, I just wanted to say Ellie was there, but no, she wasn't. <laughs> Woman, you really think you can control me with your make-believe nonsense? The restraints are not meant to control you. They are merely a yoke to deter deeper lunacies before new sins are committed. Speak like a normal person or shut up, that's what I want to say, that's why I love him. <laughs> he is so right. I'm just like, woman, what are you saying? I don't understand, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I don't speak high class or poetry <laughs> heavy as a million lives this is sue again oh no i think i think this should be sue maybe a thick medical record folder the last page has an as yet unopened letter clipped in it this folder records sue's countless medical records of people who suffered from honkai related ailments oh is this about him getting the treatment 
that was only able to be made because of thousands of people and he feels already guilty. <laughs> Oh no. Although electronic records were far more convenient and common, he preferred to use paper. I knew I loved him for a reason. Because I'm the same. I have a thousand notes here. I lo love writing on paper. I, I, I cannot make notes or anything on the, like, digital. I just don't like that. Anyway. <laughs> just me saying I love him. To him, these papers did not just represent data and information concerning the patients but it also represented the weight of lives once lived. Even after having entered a sanctuary, he would keep these records close at hand, and he would also put the letter that Dr. May had given him in there about what he should do about Kevin, huh? He was never willing to open that letter. Project Regulator. Why are you giving this to me? Because you're the only one who has kept those things that the rest of us have discarded. Ah, oh, it hurts so bad. It hurts so much. I, like, Sue is just with his calm and, like, honestly, just logical behavior and demeanor. He suffers too. <laughs> but people still put more on him. I mean, yes. That is also true for many, many, many other characters here, but... Something about Sue, he's so soft in a way. And yet he is not, but also he's so soft. <laughs> Stained Sakura. A single Sakura flower that is about to wither. Its petals seem to be stained with some blood. Only under specific circumstances might people see this flower on Sakura's tsuba. Much like her swift swordmanship, such flowers are ever so transient. When Sakura draws her sword, the cherry blossom is sent flying into the air by the speed of her blade, and it will not suffer a single blemish till frozen Naraka is resheathed, and it lands on its former perch, save only for a new coat of scarlet red it wears. Oh my god! This is indeed a sight of wonder. It is just a shame that apart from that glorious deputy, few who saw this flower would ever see the next dawn. Oh my god. <laughs> Sakura is such a sweet, sweet character. And yet her lore is kind of all the freaking dark. The, don't come any closer. Put that thing down. Wh wh what do you do in the moth anyway? I clean up. I clean up all sins. And she has some cool lines. Honestly, they did her kind of dirty. <laughs> like, obviously with her ending too. But like, we haven't really talked to her again. But uh, I guess... We can't talk to everyone all the time. <laughs> the first scale. Ooh. A dark green scale that seems to have fallen from some kind of large crawling animal. <clears throat> Her old life had passed away. She regretted nothing, for this was the path she chose. She was not saddened, for this was the fruit she had sought. New life had been born. It had opened its eyes. Its five senses groping about this ancient world. It had shed its juvenile scales, feeling the rapture of this new life once more. At this moment, the her of old was dead. In her place, it ob had obtained new life. Okay. But also, I'm reminded of the one story that we read about her. Awakening when she... or like... Her mind and she was thinking while she was born, just born. Did we ever get an answer about that? Was there an answer about that? Because I don't remember if that ever got cleared up, how that was even possible. Like, was it just one of those special things that just some people had? And for her it was she could hear and realize what was going on? I remember it was really weird. <laughs> ah, how hideous. Yet so beautiful. This is me. This is the new humanity. Not... Yeah. Sorry to break it to you, no. <laughs> Resolve. A key of domination that has been split right down the middle. Half the blade has gone missing. Gosh, I've seen that design so many times. To many who know what truly went on, the hilt of this weapon was far more dangerous than facing the edge of its blade. Even so, this could still have been considered one of the more merciful ways in which the moths dealt with the Honkai. 
countless warriors had their wings clipped here, and this broken blade was their regret and tragic desire. But a cruel test is also the beginning of a new life. A young maiden would derive from it the will to go on living, to grasp the answers that she never had before. Her fighting spirit and defiance would become primordial wings, allowing her to soar through the skies. Gosh, I'm holding back so much because so many words here, I'm just like, oh. They are bringing some of those topics, themes, or ideas also to Genshin. <laughs> I'm trying hard not to connect too much right now because it literally doesn't matter. Right now, at least right here. <laughs> because Hawkeye is definitely completely different and way more complicated right now. <gasps> but also, I'm still not sure what to say, think, or feel about the whole thing that the Moth had going on with. Just throwing away soldiers, honestly. Like, more than they seem to protect them in a way. Like, I get it. I get the reasoning behind it. But I, I just think maybe... Maybe really there should have been a different leader. <laughs> May's not the best leader. May's smart. May did what she had to do, but I'm not sure if she always made the right choices in Moss. How curious. Why did it become a pair of gauntlets? If you ask me, you would have looked cooler wielding a sword. Um, I'm sorry? <laughs> no, gauntlets are definitely Fua's thing and I love them, so... Veil of Tears. Oh my god, that's so short. A stone and jade figurine. Why does life be being or begin with crying? Perhaps it's the knowledge that this life will come to an end. Oh, that's dark. That end called death waiting for us all. Eventually and without exception, we all must die. She is not wrong. <laughs> I can't disagree with that. That's just, that's just life. May you know peace and tranquility. May you be free from suffering and sin. May this bear my blood in your place. Ooh, this is good. This is a good one. Also, I just love the, the figurine. Pseudo miracle? Oh, Vilvi. <laughs> I forgot that we also met Vilvi. <laughs> it's been a while. A poster for a certain magic show long since ended. What is here called magic is simply tricks and illusions. Performers use distractions so the audience can't tell what's going on. This is what's called misdirection. But magic is and has always been a popular form of performance. It's a lie in both word and an action that every audience member already knows. And yet they are still attracted to it. That's because what they want for one moment is a miracle. Yes, a miracle woven out of lies. And that's it. Oh, that is a that is a fascinating perspective because it's not wrong. I mean, I feel like we could also argue with it's just the joy of being surprised on what's going to happen, but also that's not the case for everything, so Interesting. More perspective on Vilvi? I'm gonna take it. That's your cue, Vilvi. Alright, I'm no. We're gonna give them a miracle to remember. <laughs> love that <gasps> fragile friend oh why are some titles are just i just already want to cry a beginner's harmonica perfect for learning on the kid was no musician but thought he should pick up an instrument maybe guitar or harmonica something cool like that kids his age aren't the best with words and get scared about being seen practicing and so the kid put off practicing an instrument that is, until a girl found out. Until she gave him the last gift between them. A harmonica. Dystopia. I'm actually kind of sad that we don't learn way more about those characters that were so dear to, to the flame chasers, but also it makes a lot of sense. And it's surprising that they can still put so much weight on it. Like, we don't know those characters, and it still feels, like, heartbreaking. At least for me. I'm just gonna assume that you guys are the same. Right? <laughs> Rainbow of Absence. A brush with paint right at the tip. A girl paints the world from the depths of her prison. There, all things wither and only darkness thrives. But, 
The girl's brush never stops. That is from her time in the deep, right? No one knows what colors she has seen in darkness. To make that prison seem like heaven through her brush. Ooh. You can ask me for anything in return, Grisio. I will do my best for you. Come a bit closer. I want to see your color. Ooh. That sounds scary, but also kind of sweet. I don't know. <laughs> Beast of emptiness. A small ball made from catnip. Great for playing with cats. Right. Actually, I haven't even thought about what that is supposed to be, because I wasn't sure just from the look of it, but that makes sense. <laughs> Arofelis loves cats. So does Ray, by the way. <laughs> but cats don't seem to too fond of her since her metamorph surgery. Instinct to reject others is as true for cats as it is for people. Oh, that's sad. No, then it's even better and worse in a way that she has can now. <laughs> She used every trick in the book from catnip to treats and still no cat would get close. The more I love something, the more it slips away. Oh, oh my god, that's heartbreaking. That's what she'd say to herself. It's the same for everyone. The more we want something, care about it and want to hold on to it. Oftentimes it's those very things that end up slipping between our fingers. Huh? Ken? Ardo, are you hungry? Uh, no, Ken... It's more like a dream of ours. A wish. Aww. Aww. A wish. I can't. I can't. The whole thing about Ken, I'm not over it. I will never get over it. I I really, literally, ever since I saw her battle suit, I thought she always had the cat. I thought she was just... I never would have thought that Ken is only in Ali's realm. And didn't exist before. Never. Never would I ever have thought. <laughs> it will be written. This is Kevin's final thing he gave us. I remember. A crystal flower that once bloomed like a rose. It is shattered beyond repair. Honestly, it kind of mirrors Elysia's. Just that it's blue. Humanity needs a leader. To lead it forward by absolute will. No amount of suffering or sacrifice could bend this will. Nor will it ever allow change. Yes. Humanity needs a leader. A leader as proud and lonely as a hero. But... Elysia. I only now got it! Oh! <laughs> I am so slow. This is basically Elysia's flower, right? And it symbolizes that probably Kevin had to kill her or was there when she was killed. Probably had to kill her. Oh gosh, that hurts. Wait, could it be that... No, of course it was Ellie who said this, right? It's Ellie who was kind of like Kevin. Humanity needs a leader, and you have to be that leader. Kind of in that sense, right? It's because of her that, that, he, that he is so bent on that, right? Please tell me I'm not completely wrong, because it feels like, like I just discovered the truth. <laughs> it feels like that. Please let me be right. But that's... that's worse! Why does everyone put so much pressure on Kevin? Honestly, in a way, many, many people from PE are at fault for Kevin being how he is now. In a way. I mean, <laughs> Dr. May definitely gave the final push with her, the mission and her dying before he returned. Couldn't she have waited five minutes? <laughs> That's inappropriate. But again... Oh. My soft spot for Kevin grows and grows. Oh no, what am I gonna do? <laughs> because of you. Oh my god, that already sounds sweet. A beautiful pop-up book with images that look just like Elysia. She knew well to take all things with you when you pass on, so others might not mourn. She also knew well that this could never be. What she left behind, however, was too much. Rippling in all directions, forever. So she decided to let her heart decide one last time. Decide to take all that she loved, all she had ever seen, all she had left behind, and bite it all into one book. What she left behind was no more than a story. About the good times. About the thirteen unable to become heroes. Just a simple tale, that's all. Oh, <laughs> My heart. 
I don't know how my heart is still beating. Like, it, it breaks every time we read something here. What the heck? But I mean, this was Ellie's last thing, so I think from here on it will get a bit easier. I am so curious about Cosma's freaking um, uh, rocket. <laughs> Couldn't remember. Boundless feeling. A finely engraved metal ring. This was a ponia. Yeah, I remember. This ring, or rather this band, is meant to bind. Binding the finger, a reminder of what ought and ought not be done. Binding the mind to make clear what is right and what is wrong. Binding fate to leave others be and avoid excess. Even sin bound within the ring. Take this ring, please. It... it is also part of the discipline. Yeah, I still don't quite get a pony, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just... I think if she would just speak differently, I might get her more, but I just... I think it's freaking cool and fascinating, but I, I I just never... I'm not able to grasp what she truly means. That's that's how I feel. Dreamful gold. Eden! A piece of music still unfinished. Oh, not, not this song. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay. Okay. I should have, I should have made myself some hot choco or something. I, why did I not think about this? <laughs> A piece by Eden, biding farewell to a friend. But by the time that friend had left, the piece remained unfinished. Time passes too quickly, leaving friendships too short. The moon and the wine still remain, but the flowers and music have all but disappeared. Now, only songbirds remain. Farewell, my friend. Oh, I mean, it's obviously about Ellie, right? Oh, this hurts. But it is fascinating, the moon and the wine still remain. Why was the final fight on the moon anyway? What what was the moon what is the moon to Honkai? Because in that time I don't know of a reason, I think. I don't know, but that's fascinating. The flowers and music have all but disappeared. Pain, pain, so much pain. Falling in past light. A broken pocket watch. It looked to have been restored. First the minute hand broke in two, but was quickly replaced. Then the casing broke, cracked as though it were struck by something. But it was soon fixed and given a protective golden case. Then the movement went. Perhaps it was left near a magnet or jostled around too often. But the watch couldn't tell time correctly anymore. And so it was fixed with a brand new movement. This pocket watch went on to break many more times. And be fixed many more times. Until one day, the person making repairs suddenly had a thought. This watch. What did it look like before I first repaired it? Afterward, no one went to went on to repair it again. Who are you? Who am I? Oh. This is kind of also saying her, right? Like, mm, this is again playing on the fact that if, if you repair something or replace broken parts... For so and so many times until there is no longer the original left. Is it still the same thing or not? Is that kind of playing on that? And is she saying that she, like, does this also all represent her? Because we saw and we read that she was kind of destroyed in a way. And Möbius took her then again. So is she also more machine than human? Or became more machine than human because she was always repaired. Could that be? Or am I, am I reading again too much into it? I don't know. This is my job right now. It's not really, but like... <laughs> I want to believe. An old pal's legacy. Oh, Kalpas. It was a murder weapon. Held by a man to stab another man. Those men became friends afterward. But this man failed. He failed to kill that man, or rather that monster he should have killed. He watched as that monster walked towards him. Watched as death intended for that monster came for him. But he did not meet death. That monster? No. That masked man only stopped in front of him and stared at the man who wanted to take his life, like a beast would his prey. That is all there was. It served as the beginning of a story. Oh. 
I love if some sort of friendship start like that. It's a weird thing to love, I know, but I just, I think that's so cool. What's your name? Emil. Emil, I'll remember that. Next time, bring a sharper knife. I still wonder if he wanted someone to kill him. I wonder if this is what he wanted. I don't know. <laughs> Empty like Shala. Wait, who is this again? The tree represents loftiness. Wait, that's not the start. A branch from a Shala tree. It's white flowers in full bloom. This has to be do again. The tree represents loftiness. The flowers oblivion. The wise man had broken off the branch in a faraway place as a kid. Not knowing the fate it represented had already come. Ooh. It was when he learned that legend told for millennia. When the body of the awakened withers, the white flowers will bloom. Ooh. Wait. When the body of the awakened withers, the white flowers will bloom. And they look like they are blooming and we know what kind of happened with... That's fascinating! To, to thrive and to wither. There is a time for both. Just as he had seen and was about to see again. And still, he was thinking of the secret path. This is your seed of Sumeru? Yes, remember it well, Kevin. May you one day see its flowers bloom. Oh, I can't with those two. Oh gosh, I'm gonna butcher this. Tsukimi Himiko? Himiko? Oh my god, that's too close to Himiko. <laughs> um, a cherry blossom shaped pendant for protection. People have long thought flowers to be beautiful things. Oh, this is the, the kind of um digital photo safe thingy. I forgot the name. <laughs> People will often use bouquet, bouquets to remember the good times. And use them to signify hope in times of sorrow. Yes, for most people, flowers are a beautiful thing. But people are also aware. Flowers must eventually wither. Yes, people have known that from the beginning. Oh. Sakura, why do you only smile when you're alone? I hang on you? Oh no, I was just curious. Alone. Ah, oh, she's smiling because she's looking at the pictures, right? My heart can't take it. My heart can't take it anymore. I need to know. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, okay. My heart doesn't have to take too much more. <laughs> Out of reach. Gosh, this is one I was curious about ever since we got it, so... A delicate model rocket. A favorite among children. No one can really define an ideal, even if it's already been realized. The boy who once dreamed of traveling among the stars to spread the righteousness he believed in only came to his senses when he was about to choose to escape. Oh. Yes. Unlike most, he was full of ambition, no matter the price. But when hopes become reality, they are no longer ideals, like something to be avoided. No one can put it into words. For something to be called an ideal, it must remain a desire unable to be reached oh god that's deep <laughs> this is the first time you didn't follow orders and the first time you failed to achieve your ideal right also the first time i didn't escape oh my god for the final fight he chose not to escape oh my heart i don't want to okay so i'm so conflicted about the freaking final fight against the final hasha at the flame chasers because on the one on one hand i want to see what happened on the other hand i do not want to ever see or read how cosma died i just don't want that i cosma is so precious oh my Boundless logos. Interlocking earrings with a pale gold shimmer. What does death really mean? For the individual, it is the end of everything. Gosh, this is really deep today. Oh my god. <laughs> I hope everyone was ready for it. Nothing can overcome it and continue to exist. For a community, it is an ordinary process of life. 
Death discards those unfit for where they live, allowing the community to continue evolving. Extinction of the community is prevented by the death of the individual. Dying to survive. On an individual level, this is quite cruel. But communally, this is a small, insignificant event happening every day, at every moment here on this planet. That's correct. Death is actually quite trivial. So, that's how death is. Oh, it's fascinating seeing Möbius' thoughts. And I mean, <laughs> not Sim Möbius' thoughts, even though they were at some point, basically. The same thoughts but it's fascinating because i wonder what what when and how changed it for mobius because i still don't know when she died because she was there when eden decided to stay so <laughs> i want to know the lonely moon Ooh. grisio has painted three self-portraits this was one of them many people think of grisio as a blank sheet he was constantly absorbing the colors of others and with them, painting thousands of pictures, and then letting them fade away. This is simply normal for Grisio. So if one were to paint a picture of her, what colors would be used? How would it be painted? Would the canvas be kept bare in its original form? No, she knew she herself. She was not just a blank sheet. So what was she then? That's my question. She saw thought about this question for a long, long time. Perhaps it was the first time she ever seriously thought about herself. Fascinating. God, I, I need to know more. And the answer to that question is the first of the three self-portraits. Yes, the girl named Grisio had been dyed countless hues, but not a one left its trace. For she wasn't a white paper, but a starry sky. Even with the occasional crossing of a meteor, the starry sky is boundless Oh, that's so beautiful. Grisio, you said this is a self-portrait? Yes. But I don't see you anywhere. Hmm? I don't? You can't see me? I'm right here. Ooh. Ooh, this is fascinating. Gosh, I want... I need to know what happened. I need to know what happened after the rocket set off. I... Mm more questions this will this will only get drive me insane i can feel it hometown no this is who i remember immediately <laughs> a ticket with smudged writing it's unclear from where it set out or to where it went no no we know we know it's from her first friend carol city to her father and she never got back there oh, the pain it was Hua's first time away from home, her first time having friends, and her first time getting close to the world. It was also her last. As it always is with a freaking Hoyaverse. There was a difference between her and her companions. She wasn't watching everything she once had fade away, but rather she had little to begin with. She had always tried her hardest to get something, only to lose it immediately after. Over the years, when she would take her morning stroll, she'd recall the faces in her hometown as they'd pass by and greet her. Home can be such a far away and difficult thing to reach in life. Oh. Oh, Hua, are you going somewhere? Maybe. Oh, this is so good. This is such a perfect writing just because she was so long. Like, obviously she lived so long, but... She always, I mean, she kind of had a home in the sense of she was always in one, not one place, but like in one region, right? But then it, but at some point she kind of also went to different places. And I mean, I don't think she really considered them home directly. Not in that sense, at least. So in, in questioning her where she's going and she's, she's like, maybe... Maybe she's going somewhere, maybe she's finding a new home. I just want to imagine that she sees Kiana and May and everyone as her home now. I just want to imagine that, okay? Good. <laughs> Awakening. A brass key and a keychain shaped like a cat's paw. It's adorable. Every key has its lock. A faithful protector waiting for the one holding the key to retrieve what it protects. That is what a lock is. 
Of course, not all good things come to those who wait. This is true of people and probably true of locks as well. Well, see you later. Ooh, I like this because I, I, I think I remember the key is to her treasure chest. And her treasure chest was also kind of like remembering things that she held dear and stuff, right? So oh, that's freaking sweet. God damn it. Oh, proof of good and evil. A beloved tome written in a thick handwriting. What the heck? <laughs> one that does good deeds should be, should be remembered here. When in distress, the one that does good should be given water to drink. And the sinner too should be recorded herein and denied a drink of water. And unto that person should be said this. What you suffer now you have done unto others. And only then should the punishment and salvation deserve to be given. Whoa, Aponia, you really keep a diary? Uh, it's not a diary per se. More just things I don't want to forget. Ah. Mm. Yeah, so the thing is, I know there are those of you who are like, she's too good of a person. And I don't want to deny that, but I think think one reason why i am not on board with her and i mean i don't mean her voice and her like she's um mommy <laughs> what but i don't like that she seems arrogant i don't know if she means to come off as arrogant but she's like this is good this is wrong this is this deserves to be punished this doesn't like i don't know any justification for someone acting like that I think that is just something that irritates me a bit. Not in a way that I d dislike her, or not in a way that I would hate her or anything. She's a fascinating character, and that alone is enough for me to like her. <laughs> anyway, far away ship. Oh, is this about Vil V again? A stack of drawings, detailing design ideas, and construction methods for something big. It has to be. People. Beginning from when they are first born, are trapped in a cage of their own common sense. There will always be someone older telling the young what to do and not to do. Most people spend their short, mundane lives within the confines of common sense. Only a small few dare to question, defy, even mock such common sense. Only these few are able to break free from common sense's cage, to truly witness and change the world as it is. These few are sometimes hailed as geniuses, but more often than not are called crazy, and more still, fools. So, Vilvi, can you tell me what this is all about? Huh? Tell you? Tell you what? Isn't this what you wanted? Can you please tell me why the second divine key looks like a train? <laughs> I love that this ended kind of nicely, but yeah. She's, she's also a fascinating character and I kind of want to learn more about her. Like, it feels like we read a lot about her, but still learn so little about her as a character or her personal feelings sometimes. Or maybe that's just me. I, I, I'm not sure. Ravenous Gully. A moth's emblem with scratches all over. It's a different kind of emblem though. Scratches? Or does that mean scratches? This is a common way to compare different materials hardness. Okay, it scratches. <laughs> if A leaves scratches on B, then A is harder than B. Emblem. A very common item used to signify recognition or memorialize something. People often use emblems in recognition of past honors or to memorialize legends. And for this emblem to have so many scratches, engravings even, well then that must be solid proof of such honors and legends. It's kind of a cool description, honestly. I never thought about it in that way. So, even though you're rejoining, you really don't want a new emblem? That's okay. I'd rather use this one. It holds quite a few memories for me. Is this Cosma? I don't quite remember from who we got that. But rejoining was Cosma, I think. Because he left because of his fallout with Kevin and then returned. It could be. <laughs> Grey sky rainbow. Grissy or grissy allure? I want grissy allure. Just generally. I just want it. Two grey feathers. 
possibly hair ornaments with traces of paint on them. I don't see paint here, but it's fine. She uses them to erase. They are her, they are her favorite ornaments. There will always be mistakes when painting. Maybe an extra stroke is needed here, or the wrong color was used there. Or in the end, the painting just didn't come out right. Either way, mistakes happen when painting. And when it does, she uses the grey feathers to erase the mistakes from the canvas. Of course, some trace will be left behind. But for that girl, those traces don't bother her too much. They'll either fade away, or become part of her next pa painting. Oh, I like that. I like that. If you don't like something, you can just erase it. Hmm? What's up, Cosma? Did I say something wrong? Yeah, if taken out of a context, you don't like something, you can just erase it. Mmm. Mmm. Nine lives. Gee, I wonder who that is. A mangled silver coin possibly struck by a bullet. <gasps> it's that special coin. What is it that luck refers to? Is good luck simply a bad thing that should have happened and then didn't? What then does bad things that should have happened refer to? And who is able to know what's going to happen before it does? What things are bad that should have happened? Don't sweat it, it's all good. Our luck is A-OK. -okay. And besides, this cat here has nine lives. Oh, is that right? The snake! Y you... Where do you come from? <laughs> you shouldn't say that in front of Möbius because she will be like... Oh, then surely you wouldn't mind giving up one of those lives for me, right? <laughs> oh gosh. I can I can definitely see it right in front of my eyes. I feel like you can too, too. The key. This freaking key. A metal pendant with a sapphire at its center. Its origins are buried in the dust and smoke of the past. There was once a time when even those lucky enough to see with their own eyes were unable to put into words what that piece of the world was like. Now, thousands of threats intersect here once more. The past sinners intend to bind themselves this way. This is the deep. There is no guidance. You either are unable to enter or unable to return. One day you will lead her to this holy church. You will bring her to me. Yeah, no, she still sounds like a cult leader to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like... I can't be the only one. <laughs> I think. Is it just me? It shouldn't be. But also, this is freaking cool. I didn't think, like, I thought, okay, maybe some of them were interesting and others I would just cut out. But honestly, most of them had actually good lore or even gave some more insight on the characters. That is so fascinating. And, and in a way, I am so sad that we will leave this place. Will there ever be a new chapter? We, pro we probably don't know. But it's so sad, I kind of don't want to leave this place. I really like this place and I really... Like, every freaking flame chaser grew on me so much. So, so much. And I mean... You can see here, I have completed those. I haven't done all of the side um, conversations here, so I will technically return again. But it's not enough. Like, I want... I, I don't want this to end. I don't. <laughs> but this is literally it with the freaking Elysian Realm. We will never enter the Elysian Realm. I mean, unless they do more chapters. I don't know if that would even make sense in the story. But it's just sad. I just want it. Anyway, um, guys, please, <laughs> if you're still here with me, leave all your thoughts down below because, um, did you read the items or was this your first time reading with me or listening? I am actually surprised. Everything has lore. Everything. I love it so much. And um, next we are going to watch Aponia's ca count council room. I don't know if that is the name because I am honestly too lazy to look it up right now. <laughs> You will probably know what I mean anyway. We're gonna look at that and then we'll figure out how we do the next chapter. Because, I mean, I can tease and tell you already, my plan is to stream it 
on YouTube. The next ch chapter, I don't know how far we will get because I don't know how long it is, but we are gonna do that. In some way or another, I'm gonna figure it out somehow. Because I know not everyone likes Twitch or has an easy way of going on Twitch. I can totally understand. So that's why I want to actually do the chapters here on YouTube. And I hope you will join me. I should have said that at the start. I will say that at the start of the next video again. Because who, who is still watching? <laughs> who is watching till the end, huh? <laughs> anyway, for now, I hope I see you guys next time. Bye!